If you have been following my channel, you probably know that I love intergas boilers. I also love air source heat pumps. And today those two worlds finally meet in a form of an intergas extent unit. This is a hybrid of a gas boiler and a heat pump. Now I'm gonna hand you to Tommy Jones from Alton and Jones Heating Solutions and he's going to talk us through how it works and how it has been performing so far. This is the intergas combination boiler, the exclusive. You would have seen combination boilers, a lot of people have got them. This runs on an open therm control. But to marry that, we've now got the extend unit. The extend unit is connected to an air source heat pump, which we'll look at in a minute. When there is a demand for heating, the air source will come on, this will run, push our heat into the property. If it's struggling to get up to the flow temperature, the boiler will then come in, top up the flow temperature and get the house nice and warm. That's the big difference with this system compared to other hybrids. The boiler is supplementing the air source. It's not running instead of. So this is the outdoor unit. At the moment, it's only available in a five kilowatt. That's five kilowatt, seven degree ambient temperature. So when it's at zero minus two degrees, we're gonna be struggling to get anything more than two and a half, three kilowatts out of this, which is why we've got the boiler to supplement it. You can see it's a much smaller unit because it's a split unit. It's an easy one man install on cantilever brackets. All we need is rotary isolator with a 13 amp supply and a fridge line going straight back in to connect to the indoor unit. We both know those boilers pretty well. Mm -hmm. We know how they operate. We know they are great boilers. How does this setup, how does the heat pump actually integrate into the heating system? Because we assume that a lot of those systems will be installed on existing boilers, right? They can be. This system can be installed on an open therm boiler. Any open therm boiler at all, so I'm told. Because it runs through open therm, this becomes the master. This tells the boiler what to do. So it can work with an open therm boiler. How has it been performing in your property? Um, it's performing. It is performing. There's some issues with circulation, um, but we can come on to that in a minute when we okay. show you the pipe set up. Um, but the actual unit itself, has been running fine. It's been really easy to install, hasn't it? Very, very easy. Literally a day. Day so, to install and connect to the system. So all you have to do is to just pipe two pipes from a boiler flow and return to this unit. What you see here is what comes with the kit. The extend unit, the outdoor unit, obviously, and this. It's a close couple T, which has been designed and made by Intergas. But this is what I think is causing a couple of issues at the minute. So let me get my head around how the system operates. Originally, the boiler was running the whole house. It's yep. like your master unit, yep. right? As soon as you connect an air source heat pump to it, mm -hmm. that becomes a slave. It does. Right? Because we've got a pump here in this unit. Yep. So the boiler is teed in just to supplement the heat pump. It, yeah. So the difference with this hybrid system is this will always run. Some hybrid systems, when it drops below a certain external temperature or the flow temp temperature doesn't reach the desired temperature, it will shut off and the boiler will then come on, usually through a buffer, or there's another hybrid on the market where the boiler just takes over. This just supplements it, which is why we need the hydronic separation between the two units. So to understand it better, there are two pumps right now. There are. There's one pump here, yep. and that can go straight through your system. It can. There's a second pump in the boiler, yep. but that pump is unable to run the system now on its own, because if you think about it, yep. it will short circuit through the closed couple T if it ever tries to run on its own, right? This is one of the issues we picked up early on um, when we was having a play with it. If this unit was to fail, if the outdoor unit is to fail, the pump shuts off this pump can only circulate through the CCT. There is a, a bit of a workaround where we can disconnect the PWM connection, which just makes the pump run continuously. Even with the unit not running? Even with the unit okay, not yeah, running, yeah. as long as there's power there. So it can get you out of a bit of a hole, but obviously it's taking out the PWM part of the pump, so it's just running flat out. So hold on, if you have a fault on the external unit, or if it doesn't run for some reason, the yep. whole system fails? It does, yeah. And there is, no control mechanism that would keep that pump running? At the moment, no. Um, have spoke to Intergas about this and they're looking at something, obviously it's just something on the circuit board they can deal with, um, but it posed a problem and we found it when I installed this and we had a couple of issues. Um, we had to just 
play around with the PWM part of the pump to get it running. To my mind, it might be a better setup to reverse it. When it's cold enough to warrant the boiler coming on, in my mind, the boiler becomes the master yeah. for providing the heat, which means this setup isn't going to work. The other thing with this boiler is this pump on its lowest setting, this is a seven meter head pump, on its lowest setting is flying through here. Yeah. That's causing a bit of a problem. What are the main benefits of this setup? Well, I would say the main benefits are space, no need for a hot water cylinder. If you've got a pretty good new combination boiler, it can add to it. Um, if you've got one of these systems installed, they could last 15, 20 years. It will work on a cylinder system as well. However, the air source aspect will not heat your hot water. I also understand that Intergas gives you better warranty if you've got an existing boiler and you add this setup to it. If you've got an existing Intergas boiler, I don't know if it's got to be within a certain time frame that it's been installed, but you will get an additional three years warranty on the boiler. So if you were to put in a new boiler like we've got, you're looking at 10 years on the boiler, you get two years by having their filter, you get three years with this. So you're actually getting 15 years warranty. So I think it's pretty stupid, but that's what manufacturers do nowadays. Do you see this technology, hybrids being adopted in UK? I do, I do see there's a place for it. With this particular setup, you've got two very small fridge lines. They can run a maximum, I think it's 20, 25 meters. So it's very easy to do. This could go up in the loft. You could have the air source unit just outside. Your boiler could be in an airing cupboard. The boiler could be in the loft. If there is a change to the bus grant. If hybrids are included in the bus grant, I think there will be a lot more of these going in. Will you see any savings on your bills by adding air source heat pumps to the setup? And also tell me, how do they interact? So you will see a reduction in your gas bill because you're using much less gas. You can tell the unit at what point to bring the gas boiler on this is set up at a cop of, I think, 3.1 at the moment. We can change that. So if it gets, it's using too much electricity, it can back off and allow this to do more work. So basically, you are able to calculate at what cop this is cheaper to run than a gas boiler. Yeah. And if it gets more expensive than a gas boiler, the gas boiler the gas takes boiler over. Will run. Yeah. yeah. In your experience, how does this setup compared to other hybrids on the market? Because there aren't that many, right? There aren't. There aren't. Um, the only other hybrid I've seen that uses a combination boiler is the Alpha. Um, with that, my understanding is the outdoor unit circulates through the boiler and it has to be an Alpha boiler and then goes to your system. The difference with this is both units can work together or the outdoor unit can work completely independently. I think it's a better setup. Um, I'm not a big fan of what I've seen of the Alpha unit, to be honest. So if you already have a decent uh, open therm boiler or intergas boiler, that may be one of the cheapest ways of reducing your carbon footprint, right? Without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah, adding that, it will definitely reduce your gas usage for your heating system. So it will bring down your carbon footprint quite significantly. So this CCT is designed to separate these two systems, the two pumps need to be separated so they don't interact. So with this, our pump from our indoor unit will circulate through to our system. When there is a demand for the boiler to come in, it will circulate through here, should go down to our system, but go back on the return line. This setup here, I don't think is quite right. I personally think this CCT should have a much longer bit of pipe out of here, slightly longer coming out of here, but ultimately I think it should be on the boiler side because when the boiler is running, it becomes our primary heat source. What we can get through here is where it's coming through the flow, if our pump is circulating too fast, it's coming down here and it's mixing. So it's overshooting the temperature here, causing the boiler to shut down too early. That I think is the problem we're experiencing at the minute. What I'm intending on doing is I'm gonna put a small buffer unit down here. 
Now that buffer unit will have our extend connected to our air source and we will go into here. Our boiler will then come into here and then this will be our heating system. So that is your, just, a, just a typical buffer, right? You've got a yep. buffer here, boiler pump, air source heat pump going to one buffer, and a system pump, right? Yep, pretty much. That's what I'm going to look at doing. Two reasons. One, obviously this. But for me, if there's an issue with this, this can then cope with the entire system without having to mess around with a PWM connection or anything. If the pump fails in here, this one's going to work. If the pump fails in here, this one's going to work. I've always got a way to warm the buffer. I could also, if I wanted, put a small immersion in there, connect it to electricity, connect it to PV. It's another way around. I've got solar thermal I can put in, something I'm just going to play around with. If you're looking at the setup and you see this zone valve here, another zone valve here, that's because Tommy is a post <laughs> He's got a swimming pool, right? There's a lot of water that goes into that. During COVID, got bored. I put a swimming pool outside. It wasn't warm enough. So I put all this lot in. We've got a heat exchanger. We've got a skid pack, chlorinator, and I've connected it to the boiler. So when there's a demand for this, this will open up. This one will close, isolating that part of the system. And I get a nice warm swimming pool where the children then leave me alone because it's warm enough and I can do my own thing. So the commissioning part of this is really good. I'm well impressed with that. What we do on the front of here, give that a press, we get a flashing light. On our Wi-Fi network, we go to our extend unit and we go into our camera. So once we've activated the Wi-Fi, we scan the QR code, it will take us to our summary page of the Extend unit. This will show us exactly what's going on. So we've got the heat pump on and the boiler on at the moment. I can actually go in there and turn those off for service mode if I want to. It will show us flow rates, flow rate temperatures, return temperatures, everything that the unit's actually doing. If we come back and we go into our settings mode, this is where we can go in, we can set the minimum COP so it won't run the heat pump if it's going to be more expensive to use than the gas boiler. Um, we can also add our tariffs for electricity and gas. So again, it can work out if you've got a, an overnight tariff of octopus and you put that into here, it knows it's cheaper to run this overnight. So it's not going to use the boiler as much. This setup is really, really good. And I would like to see this implemented on other manufacturers. I hope you like what we've showed you with the setup. Do you think it's something you would have? If you want to leave a comment saying you would, you wouldn't, why you would, why you wouldn't, is there a place in the market for it? But I hope you enjoy the video.